Hey there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, my name's Brittany. Welcome to the Text Island YouTube channel. Here I focus on basketry, natural dyeing, and other traditional and fiber art. I'm currently working on a vlog series on a project that I'm doing personally and want to share the journey with you. So if you haven't seen the first video, Spinning Yarn, check the description below. This one will be dyeing the hand spun yarn and in a few weeks I'll be putting out a video on knitting that yarn into a finished piece which I'll talk about later and show you my pattern. If you're more interested in natural dye tutorials, check the description below. I have the playlist from my channel linked down there. You can see all my tutorial videos as well as links to my natural dye blog post. The process that I'm going to be going through is scouring all of my hand spun yarn. So cleaning it and then mordanting it and then natural dyeing it with some different colors. And I'll go more into detail with each of those steps as we come to them. So without further ado, let's dive into this project. Since I'm going to be natural dyeing my wool yarn, I'm going to go through a scouring process, which is an intense cleaning process to remove any dirt and oils from uh, my skin or grease from the sheep or the process processing of the wool. And then I'll be using a mordant to prepare the fibers to take on the natural dyes. Natural dyes uh, interact with a wool fiber in the way that the core of the fiber, it opens up, grabs the mordant, and then the mordant is able to grab the pigment or the, the natural dye color. I'm going to be using aluminum sulfate as my mordant. Uh, natural dyeing, you can use it a lot of different metal salts or um, water soluble metals that can apply to the surface and the core of the fiber in order to hold dye onto the fiber so that it's bound and won't just wash off or um, fade dramatically in light. So I will scour with Synthropol, which is a great detergent for use on wool, and then be mordantine with aluminum sulfate. I'm going to make up a scouring bath and using Synthropol. So I'm setting up my um, scale here and I'm going to weigh out all of the fiber that I need to scour in grams. And I'm working in grams because it's a small enough unit that it makes sense for small amounts of powders. So I'll put all of my fiber in here and this is fiber that's dry. I'm gonna weigh it out so I'm at 719 grams. So that's how much I'm gonna work with. I'm going to use this extra large pot right here and fill that up with water and my Synthropol. So I'm gonna do seven grams of Synthropol. on the stove scouring. It needs to come to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna hold that for an hour and let it do its scouring thing. Then I can do the morning tea process. While we wait, I wanna talk about what I'm going to dye my different skeins of yarn with to create different colors. And I'm using different natural dyes, so I wanna show you what those look like. So I've been thinking about this project for probably a year now, and finally have decided that at the beginning of summer is a good time to knit up a shawl. I don't know why now is a good time because summer's not a great time to wear a shawl, but maybe if I start now, it'll be done by fall. My goal is to have this be a fast project, but we'll see. So I have been um, drooling over Drea Renee Knits Night Shift Shawl for a long time. And her colors in her piece are gorgeous together. And I really love those colors, but I really wanted to use hand spun yarn that I dyed myself to use all of my skills and create something that'll actually wear. So if you watched my previous vlog in this series, Spinning Yarn, uh, you saw me go through the process of spinning one skein of yarn. 
I've been spinning yarn for this project for, like I said, about a year and a half. So it's been here and there making more and more yarn and stocking it away to make this project because I need about 900 yards of yarn. It's a lot of yarn. You saw me putting it into the pot for scouring. It's a lot of yarn. So I'm trying to be very careful about the colors that I choose because I really do want to love this piece because I've put a lot of effort into it already. I'm going to be putting effort into the dyeing and then of course the knitting. So this shawl is probably gonna have, I don't even really wanna think about how many hours of work. So I have some cochineal dyed yarn that I showed you earlier that's pre uh, previously dyed. I've already dyed that. And then some matter root dyed yarn as well. And then I have an avocado pit and skin dyed um, skein as well. I have cochineal, which is a dye produced from a beetle. Matter, which is uh, a dye produced from a plant root that's crushed up and powdered and used as a dye. And then I'm gonna do some indigo dyed yarn and some indigo dyed yarn that I'm going to over dye with weld. So the blue of the indigo and the yellow of the weld will create a kind of tealy green color. And then I might do half a skein in walnut and then eucalyptus. Definitely check out Drea Renee Knits if you haven't already. She has a ton of super cute designs. I'm not a sponsor or anything, I just love her designs. And actually, I started knitting this fall one of her other designs, and I'm in the process of knitting a sweater of one of her sweater designs. And this is going to be a cardigan. There's an opening in the front and I have the collar already knitted. So I have quite a ways to go to finish this project, but why finish a project when you can start another one? That's what I wanna know. I find that spring and summer are one of the, my favorite times to dye, especially, especially natural dyeing because I can do a lot of it outside. And so there's less mess and I can spend more time outside. And we'll talk about activities you can do while dyeing because dyeing is a lot of hurry up and wait and there's a lot of space and multitasking is out of fashion. But natural dyeing is one of the times where multitasking comes in handy. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. If you're looking for natural dye tutorials and how to's, be sure to check out the description below. I have a list of videos I've done on how to natural dye. This is a vlog style video, so I'm just sharing my process and a project that I'm working on. But if you want to learn how to do that, check out my website, textileindy.com. I have lots of resources on natural dyes there. And I will be coming out with a new natural dye course series here in the next year or so. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. It takes a long time to video and edit all of that stuff. So it'll be a while, but it is coming. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, check out the blog posts and videos I do have linked in the description below. For this dyeing process, I'm going to use 20% of alum. And now with this weighed out, I can wet this out in hot water and then add it to my pot when I'm ready to start more denting. So multitasking is out of fashion. Studies show it's not good for your brain. I'm not entirely sure what studies because I haven't actually read them, but I do understand it raises your cortisol and whatever. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna talk about that. But I do find that finding something else to do while you're natural dying and waiting for your pot to heat up is way more productive because the alternative is this.
And while staring at a pot for an hour may be an intriguing activity for some people, I would rather be reading a book, washing the dishes, doing some spinning, knitting something, or doing something else. So I tried to pack those moments in between my dying projects with another activity. So in case you're struggling with some ideas on what to do while you're waiting for your dye pots to heat up, here's some suggestions. Garden, read a book, knit, spin, dye something else. Pair other fiber and fabric for dyeing projects. Do some laundry, clean your house. Did I already say do the dishes? You could bake something, paint a wall, do some yoga. I start to feel a bit like a witch from a Disney movie when I have pots of green things on my stove. I have newt and tail of toad. I don't think toads actually have tails, but couldn't think of anything else. Dyes are ready to process, so I am going to strain these out. Now I'm going to transfer my eucalyptus leaves to keep all the liquid and I'm gonna compost the leftovers here, put that in there, and then transfer the dye back into my original pot. So that is my eucalyptus dye. Now I was pretty smart for this matter. I put the roots in a bag already, so I just need to squeeze out the liquid. This is very hot. So I'm gonna stick this over this jar to drain. And then this dye is ready. And now for the weld. This one's more complicated because it's stems, leaves, flowers, stalks, all of it. So it's pretty messy. And I've clogged my sink and had to snick it because the greenery doesn't break down. And after two hours of sneaking my sink, to clear it out of dye plants, I think I've learned my lesson. The thing with weld for me is that I can do multiple extracts from this stuff, and this is stuff that I grew, so it's extra precious because I went through the whole process of starting the seeds and growing the little seedlings and then planting it and then keeping it alive all summer last year and then harvesting it. So this is not entirely exhausted, so I could do another extraction where I add water and extract more. So I'll probably do that and my weld dye is ready to go. Now I'm going to pull out a few bundles of the yarn that I have mordanted in the alum sulfate and add them to my dyes. I'm going to do one in the eucalyptus bath, do a small one in the matter bath just to get kind of a lighter red from that or kind of a um, rusty color and then the weld is actually going to be an over dye so i need to dip some indigo yarn and then add it to the weld to get kind of a tealy green and over dye my indigo so we'll be doing indigo next decided that this dark this lighter brown i want to darken so i have a jar here started of walnut hole dye that i'm going to um, put this in and dye this so i get a darker deeper brown just gonna lower this in there, give it a peek. It's kind of a golden color right now. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit at about 140 degrees for an hour and come back and revisit it. And I'm gonna put this little guy in here. Now it is time to check on my indigo vat and refresh it and get it ready because I have several bundles of yarn ready to dye with indigo and then one of them I'll over dye with the weld. definitely been a day <laughs> of figuring things out. The eucalyptus I thought would change with some iron water but 
it didn't go gray like I was expecting it to. When you do bundle dyeing, um, eucalyptus goes kind of black. And so I was thinking, oh, I'll just sprinkle iron water on it and that will work, but it didn't. I think that the iron water works on cotton. It's just reacting weird on the wool. Um, what else? Oh, I put in some yarn into the cochineal bath and got a very different purple from the original red that I got. So decided to go with it. So I'll probably end up with a variety, more variety of colors. This is yarn that I dyed with indigo and then over dyed with weld and then all that indigo washed out. So I dipped it back into the indigo. I'm trying to get teal. <laughs> now I'll let it oxidize and then rinse it out. So I'm dying in my indigo vat and I keep running into problems. I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but uh, I'm trying to balance the pH to make it friendly to wool so it's not super basic or alkaline bath. I'm trying to get the pH to a 9.5 and um, it just seems to be going up higher. <laughs> So I'm problem solving that and it's just taking a lot of time because I have to um, add reducing agent and then let it settle and then retest it. I'm having allergies right now. <laughs> so <laughs> this dying project is kicking my butt. I'm having fun other than feeling a little bit defeated. I took on a lot and so trying not to get overwhelmed by that. But I'll show you my indigo vat and what I've got going here. So here is my indigo vat here. I have it in a pot. This morning it was cold out so I put some hot water in the pot to sort of heat it up. And then we had a nice sunny day so that continued to heat it. I have a little jar here to check my reduction and my stir stick and then gloves because I don't really want blue hands today. <laughs> And then I just put in some wool yarn um, to see how it's doing just as a test. And I did a t-shirt for my sister as well. So playing around with that. I feel like I finally got this vat balanced. So I'm trying to make the most of it. Okay, 10 minutes. Here we come. Well, I finally got a skein of indigo yarn that I am happy with. Hey, yay! <laughs> um, it's kind of a medium blue, and I am currently dyeing two more in my indigo vat down there, down there to try to get to this blue as well. And then I'm going to do another weld um, dip for one of the skeins to try to get kind of a teal color. I did the one skein and it ended up being really foresty green, which is a beautiful color and I'm super excited that I achieved that color, except for this project I wasn't trying to achieve forest green. I was trying to do teal. It goes contrary to exactly what you want. <laughs> but super excited to have achieved this blue and we'll keep dipping. My vat is pretty weak because I didn't have a ton of indigo um, powder to include into it so I'm having to do a lot of dips and I was struggling with um, tining putting my skeins in and then having the vat um, settle in between dips 
and it was taking a long time to settle. And so I did a little research and typically you're supposed to have some sort of basket or something in the bottom of your vat to lift whatever you're dipping above the sediment. And I didn't have that because my bath, bath is weak and so I didn't want it to, um, whatever I put in there, <laughs> to absorb the indigo and waste all my indigo. Uh, so I didn't want to put something that's a natural material like a basket or something like that in there. Um, so I just, I found a milk jug, cut the bottom out and smashed it down and sunk it to the bottom. And I've been putting my yarn on top of that and that seems to be working well. I've been able to do more dips more quickly without as long wait times. So that's exciting too. Well, it's time to show the final results of my dyeing. I'm super stoked about these colors. Not exactly what I had planned, but natural dyes tend to just seem to come together and look great together no matter what. Uh, so that's how this ended up. Um, I'll go through each of the different colors, but I want to show you just this range here and how beautiful it turned out. This guy is the Weld and Indigo. And as it dries, it's a little more teal than I was thinking. So I may include it in, but it's so much richer than my other colors or more dense in color that I don't know that it's really gonna go. So this might get set aside for another project, which is entirely okay. But these colors are great. This is one of the colors I just was playing with my new ball winder, which I'll be sharing about in my knitting vlog coming up in a few weeks. So here's my colors. I have the indigo dipped yarn. This is avocado pits and skins. I had dyed this previously. This is the matter root dye that I did in this video. And this was previously dyed um, several months ago. Eucalyptus and then I over dyed it with welds. So I did the eucalyptus, tried the iron water, that didn't work. So I dipped it and dyed it in some weld and it gave it kind of a goldeny ochre color. This is the cochineal I did in this video. Way more purple than this cochineal, which I had previously dyed. So just a different batch of uh, cochineal, I suppose, and slightly maybe slightly different process or this had some iron in it. Um, so it's more purple, it saddened it a little bit. Um, but I'm happy with the color. And then this is the kind of tan color that I over dyed with walnut to get a, a tad bit darker. It didn't go quite as dark as I was hoping for. I was hoping for more of, let's see, that's a dark patch. More of this really dark brown here, but it kind of washed out and faded as it dried more than I was hoping. But it goes well in my color scheme and it is darker than the avocado pits skin yarn. So I'm happy with how that turned out. So of course, as you can see, compared to my color list at the beginning of this video, this isn't exactly what I was going for. And I've thought about this for a while because I wanted to make sure these were colors that I actually like and want to invest the time in making something out of them or making that shawl out of them because it's been a project on my mind for so long. And I think I really do like these colors. This range is really nice and I think it would fit into my wardrobe just fine. So these beauties are going to become that wonderful Night Shift Shawl by Drea Renee Knits. And you can see that process in an upcoming video in a few weeks. It probably is gonna take me multiple weeks to make that video. So I'll have other videos posting in the interim, but keep an eye out. I'll post about it in the community tab and on my website and other places. Uh, I'm gonna put a page together with all the different videos in this series so they're all combined. And you can just watch through the entire series seam seamlessly once they're all created. I'm super excited to start knitting this project and see it come to fruition. Just having all of this yarn dyed is so exciting. I've been staring at the white yarn pile build up for about a year, as I said earlier. And so it's so exciting to see it in color and get to a point where I could actually knit with it. Thanks for joining me to 
go through the journey of dyeing this yarn. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. It helps spread it to others that are interested in traditional craft, natural dyeing, and fiber arts. And if you feel so inclined, you could share it with one of your friends who is also interested in traditional craft and natural dyeing. It would help spread the word about the textile in a YouTube channel and my work here. I would really appreciate that. It's such a blessing to be able to make videos here and share all of the skills that I've developed over the years, learn from other artists and creators and love to share and teach and, and experience. So thanks for doing that. Check the description below for um, the blog posts and other videos on natural dyeing on my channel and blog, blog, <laughs> blog posts on my blog. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I'm probably going to go start winding these into balls and prepping them for that video here pretty quickly. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.